Okay, y'all. Sorry about that. I deleted the other one. Um, I'm starting a little bit late with the numerology, so I'm just going to give some time for people to come in. Um, sorry I'm starting late tonight, but I hope you guys still tune in. Um, I'm going to be giving some information about the numbers, so make sure your pens and papers are ready. I just wanted to make sure that it was on live. Well, not on live, on public mode, so that you guys can see um, what I am doing. Last time I had a little bit of difficulty last time we did live because um, I had some difficulty because it wasn't on public. It was only being seen by me. So let me put um, the donation uh, places. My cash app is dollar sign Aza Brisky. Um, my Venmo is my first and last name. I do appreciate everyone that comes through and um, hits up my cash apps on my Venmo. It is greatly appreciated because anyone who knows me personally knows that I have... Um, left my official job job um and so it takes you know i still have bills i still um appreciate the reciprocation of providing you guys with information um and being able to receive donation from y'all so everyone who hits my cash app or my venmo i appreciate it even the people who may not be able to afford it at the moment i appreciate you as well who still participate and tune in um, I'm going to be giving a lesson today. Let's see if people are willing to come in. Hey, Ma, my mother's here. <laughs> Let me just change the title of this. We're going to be talking about numerology. Um, bring your pens and your papers so that you guys can take note on the information. And we'll talk about personality numbers. So we're going to do personality number readings as well as we go along once we discuss the numbers and how they work now of course i can't tell y'all all the secrets i know with the numbers but i do want to um bring some things to you guys attention starting with uh zero and going all the way up from zero to nine so i'm going to give some time for everyone to come in um, I'm going to sing a song, uh, you know, I always sing a song or a prayer, really the prayers that's turned into songs, um, that a woman that I know, uh, sung, I, I think she created this song, but I love it. I don't know if it's just an Ikaro or if she created it, but it's a very beautiful, beautiful, um, song. So I'm going to do that to start out with, you know, as I like to do my little prayers. Also got my singing bowl, my little small singing bowl. So we can focus on vibration and energy. Everyone breathe in. And as you breathe out, breathe out all the stress. Picture the stressful thoughts and the stressful things and the worries leaving your body as you breathe out. Let's do it one more time. Breathe in. Soak up all that stress and worry. And then breathe it out and release it. I'm actually wearing lip gloss by my little cousin Naya. Um, <laughs> Naya has her own lip gloss line. I posted it earlier today on my page. So feel free to hit up my cousin for her lip gloss. This is my younger cousin. Um, she's young, getting into entrepreneurship. So we definitely have to support each other. Everybody should support each other. That's doing stuff that's... Um, legitimate that's trying to um, build business especially during these times when people are going through hardship and need money you know um, if we all support each other then everybody will be good so um, let's do one more breathe in and breathe out so calm the spirit and as we breathe out I want us to think of peace and tranquility so breathe in all the worry all the stress all the crazy thoughts 
and breathe them right out of your body. Have intention, have your mind breathing it out. Envision those things coming out of your breath, coming out through your mouth. Ready? Listen to the sound vibration. We give honor and thanks to the Creator. We give honor and thanks to Mother Nature. My sound ain't working right. Hold on. <laughs> we give honor and thanks to the ancestors. There we go. The guidance of the ancestors. We give honor and thanks. We give honor and thanks to the ancestors that passed down the metaphysics to help us heal, to guide us through life. We give honor and thanks to Mother Nature. Honor and thanks to the universe. Mm -hmm. We give honor and thanks to the plants that heal us, to heal our body and heal our mind. We give honor and thanks to the animals, to the children. Aho. Gracias por esta mañana, gracias por la vida, gracias por la familia, gracias por las medicinas. Buenos días, buenos días, buenos días, hey, oh, Ana, hey, hey. Buenos días, buenos días, buenos días, hey, oh, Ana, hey, hey, oh, hey. Thank you for this new day. Thank you for our lives. Thank you for our families. Thank you for the medicine. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, oh, Anna. Hey, hey, oh, hey. Thank you, everyone, for being here. We are about to begin. <laughs> so, we're going to talk about the very basics of numbers. I hope everyone has their paper and their pens ready. Um, so I'm going to give you information. We're going to focus on numbers 0 through 9. Um, there's different numerological systems. You have um, from different cultures. You have a Nigerian system. You have um, a Pythagorean system, you have a Chaldean system, there's different systems that deal with numbers. But numbers are also very, 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 very important. And they have different vibrations to them. Every letter in numerology translates into a number. So, focusing on the numbers zero through nine. We're gonna start with zero. Zero is a feminine energy. Zero is a cipher. It's a circle that's always ongoing. If you look at something like an ankh, for example, let me draw ankh. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I hope y'all can. The top part of the ankh represents the womb, the zero. The top part of the ankh represents the womb. The bottom part represents the male principle. The number zero is feminine. The number one is masculine. So even when it deals with numbers, it deals with masculine and feminine energies. Every number is tied to an element. Every number is tied to masculine, feminine energy. Some numbers have some of both that you'll see in the composition of the number based on the shape of the number. So for example, if you look, thank you so much, y'all. If you look at something like, uh, let's say, what's a number that has both? The linear strokes on a number represent the masculine principle and the circular strokes on a number represent the feminine principle. So if you take a number like the number two, you have that curve of the number two, 
but then you have a part where it's linear and it's straight, representing the uh, feminine energy and the masculine energy put together. You see what I'm saying? Whereas you look at the number three where it's just curve. It's more feminine of an energy. But then you look at something like the number seven, it's very linear, masculine. So that's just something just to keep in mind as you think of numbers. So zero represents infinity. It, inv it represents 360 degrees, an ongoing process, and it is a feminine energy. The zero keeps going on and on and on and on and on. Now, of course, nobody's born on a zero day. So we're going to focus on <laughs> some of the other numbers. Uh, the number eight is all feminine. Yes. Very good. Because you see the, the circular strokes of the eight. Um, so we're going to start with number one. And as we go through the numbers, I'm also going to give you information about that number on its highest vibration and its lower vibration. Because numbers also deal with balance. The balance of the masculine and feminine. The balance of the elements. But also the balance of... And I'm just freestyling, so I may jump back into other points. But um, also the balance of um, the masculine, the feminine, and the balance of the higher and, and lower vibrations of that number. Because no number is bad. I don't care what nobody say. Nobody's number is bad. Some numbers are at opposition with each other, but no number is bad. Every number has a positive side and a negative side, just like everything else in life, just like people. We have positive sides in us and we got negative sides in us. No matter how sweet a person is, no matter how mean a person is, we have both vibrations working inside of us. The yin and the yang, everything in nature and metaphysics deals with some level of balance. So you have people born under the number one. So what I mean by born under the number one or whatever numbers I'm going into next, I'm speaking of the specific day. The date a person is born. So for example, I'm born July 15th. I'm born on the 15th of July. So that holds a certain vibration at 15. And the number day that a person is born is their personality number in numerology. So if you're born under the 1st, the 10th, or the 19th, you are born, your personality number is the number one. You're a number one person. Okay, so people born under the number one, the positive vibration of people born under the number one, we're going to start with the positive and then we're going to, matter of fact, let's start with the negative first. Let's start with the negative, let's flip it around. We're going to start with the negative vibration of the number first and then we're going to go to the positive flip side. So the negative vibrations of people born under the number one, which means they're born under the first, the 10th or the 19th of a month. The reason 10 is a number one is because in numerology, all numbers go from one to nine. Every number gets reduced in numerology from one to nine. I don't care if it's 3,366. The way you reduce numbers in numerology is you add the numbers together until you get a single digit, unless they are a master number. And I'll explain master numbers um, a little bit further. Let me take notes because I'm kind of freestyling. Master numbers. I'm going to go back into master numbers. If I forget, I want y'all to remind me. So, 10 in numerology equals to a 1. So, if you're born under the 10th of a month, it's 1 plus 0, which is 1. So, that's a number 1 person. 19 in numerology equals 1 because 1 plus 9 is 10. 1 plus 0 is 1. So, everything in numerology breaks down into a single digit. Now, some numerologists don't break down master numbers, but master numbers still equal that single digit. So people born, let's start with the negative side of the number, and then we'll go to the positive side. People born under the number one. That means they're born on the first of a month, the 10th of a month, or the 19th of a month. On their lower side, they can be very selfish. They can have control issues. Very self-centered. Very, um, they can be not self-motivated on their lower vibration. They can be very spiteful. 
And that's the lower vibration, a synopsis of the lower vibration. I'm giving a little synopsis because we can go way deeper. A low, uh, low vibration for people born under one of those number one days. The higher vibration is that people born under the number one, oops, let me turn the alarm off. People born under the number one can also be very self-motivating, very self-motivated, very innovative. They could be trendsetters. They can be the type of people who don't like to play by the rules in a positive way or a negative way. So a lot of times, if you have a person or a kid that is born on the 1st, the 10th, or the 19th of a month, those kids are usually hard-headed. <laughs> those adults are usually hard-headed. They usually don't like to follow rules. They usually are people who um, like to just do their own thing. They don't like to be tied down. They like to do their own thing. They like to express themselves their own way, even in something as simple as the way that they dress. They like to look a little bit different than other people. They don't want to wear the same shit everybody else is wearing. If you're dealing with a child born under the number one, those are the kids that don't really want you to do stuff for them all the time. They want to do it themselves. I know how to feed myself. I know how to tie my shoe. Those are those type of kids. You know what I mean? So we're going to move on to the number two. The lower vibration of people born under the number two. So people born under the number two are people born on the second of a month, the 11th of the month. 11 is a master number, but we're going to come back to that. People born on the 20th of a month. People born any of those days of a month, their personality is a number two. The lower vibration of the number two is slick, always trying to pull a fast one. All people born under the 29th of a month, I'm sorry. So people born under the number two on the second of a month, the 11th of a month, the 20th of a month, or the 29th of a month. Those are people who have the personality number of the number two. People born under the number two their lower vibration is very deceptive. Um, tricksters. Two-faced. Um, liars. <laughs> deceivers. They like to um, pull a fast one on you. When you have kids born under the number two, it never seems to <laughs> amaze me how some of them try to pull a fast one on you. Um, and let me see. What else is from their lower vibration? Their lower vibration is deceptive. Um, kind of speaking with forked tongue. When you think of a forked tongue, it's two sides, it's two lanes. You know, the higher vibration of the two energy is sensitivity, which can be higher or lower depending on how a person uses their sensitivity. The higher vibration of the number two, and I'm just giving brief general synopsis because I'm going from zero to nine. The higher vibration of people born under the number two is that they are very helpful people, very loving and caring, very helpful, always willing to help a friend or someone. They can be very sweet. They have uh, natural healing abilities a lot of times when they're born under the number two. Um, and that means, remember, the second, the 11th, the 20th or the 29th of a month. Those people are the type of people who are easy a lot of times to work with. Um, and just like usually kind of pleasant to be around. Very helpful, nice, uh, peaceful spirited people. They love peace on their higher vibration. Now we're gonna go to the number three. Those are people born on the third of a month, the 12th of a month, People born under the 30th of the month, the, the 3rd, the 12th, or the 30th of a month. Those are people whose personality number equals to the number 3. On the lower vibration, people under the number 3 love to gossip. Love to gossip and talk shit. <laughs> they love to... Um, <sighs> They love drama. They love drama. I'm sorry, I skipped a number. I'm sorry, don't let me skip a number, y'all. 
the third of the month, the 12th of the month, the 21st or the 30th of a month. I'm going straight off the top of the dome. So um, don't mind me if I, if I go back, just be sure to add whatever I'm adding to your notes. Decept um, not deceptive. They're not naturally usually deceptive, but people born under any of those days tend to get drawn into drama and controversy in life. They tend to enjoy gossip and drama, even though some of them don't, don't uh, acknowledge that, but they tend to um, be people who tend to draw those things or stir up those things. Um, on the higher vibration side of that, of that number three, people born under the third, the 12th, the 21st, or the 30th, the higher vibration of people with that number is that they tend to be social butterflies, very likable people, people who tend to do well in entertainment. Um, and number threes are great at expressing themselves. Now, on the lower vibration, they got a slick ass mouth. Just, number ones do too, by the way. <laughs> On the lower vibration, the threes have a slick mouth. They speak a lot of times without filter. They don't think all the way through the things that they say to people all the time. They just, boom. <laughs> Ones have a tendency to do that too. Now, as we're going along, I actually forgot to mention the elements. The number one is under the fire element. The number two is under the water element. The number three is under the fire element as well. So you'll find similarities between the one and three and some of the other fire numbers. Moving on to the number, matter of fact, before I move on any further, health ailments. Number ones, people born under number one days tend to have to pay attention to their eyesight. On the physical sense and their eyesight in a spiritual sense of their perception of things. They have to look at how they're looking at things because sometimes they have a wrong perception of things. People born under the number two tend to have digestive issues tend to have issues with the colon area. And because it's a water number, they tend to need to drink a lot of water on a regular, consistent basis. People born under the number three tend to have issues with low blood pressure. Low blood pressure. Mm -hmm. So now we're gonna move on to the number four. Number four. If you notice, number four is very linear. A lot of masculine energy with the number four. Number four on the, uh, is people that are born on the fourth of a month, the 13th of a month, people who are born on the 22nd of a month. 22 is also a master number. I'm going to come back to these master numbers. And people who are born on the 31st of a month. Now, most numerologists recognize two master numbers, 11 and 22. So take note of that and keep a little space in the area as you're writing those two numbers down because I'm going to come back to the master numbers after I go from zero through nine. But people born under the 4th, the 13th, the 22nd, or the 31st of a month are people who are born under the number four. That means their personality number is a four. People with the number four energy on their lower vibration can have a lot of mental issues. They can overthink themselves into mental illness. They tend to uh, struggle with overthinking and worrying. But really, really, a lot, a lot, a lot of overthinking, a lot of mental energy. They analyze everything. They pick everything apart in their mind. You could say hi, and hi means 20 other things in their mind. <laughs> hi. Oh, why did they say hi? What does that mean? Do they really mean hi when they say hi? Or did they mean something else? That's the number four on the lower vibration. Please make sure to see in the chat my donations um, areas if you want to donate. My cash app, dollar sign A Zabriskie, or because I'm giving a free lesson, but I still got to pay my bills. So if you can donate anything that you can to my cash app or to my Venmo, please. The higher vibration of the number four 
is number fours can be very good at building foundation. They hard workers on their higher vibration. And number fours, the analytical skills can go either way. It can be lower vibration or higher vibration. The analytical skills and the lower vibration, if you're overanalyzing every single thing, every single finite detail, that can be more of a low vibrational thing. But it can be a higher vibrational thing if you're someone who's somewhat of a skeptic with something like a pyramid scheme. The higher vibration, will, the, the, the analytical skills will help you out. Because it'll be like, okay, well, hmm, this doesn't feel right. I don't know. I want to poke and prod at this a little bit more. You know what I mean? Health-wise, number fours tend to be one of the numbers that are commonly misdiagnosed when they go to the doctor. The doctors never could kind of figure out 100% what they have or they'll change their diagnosis that they gave them originally. Um... And sorry, I got the bonnet on today. I ain't got the feathers on today, but hopefully y'all love me anyway. <laughs> I know y'all do. And if y'all don't, I don't care. But <laughs> but um, just going back, um, yes, the higher vibration of the four, um, they can build things, especially people born in the 22. They can build masterful things on their higher vibration. Um, very disciplined. That's another higher vibration of the number four, very disciplined, orderly, structured. When you look at the number four, it's rigid. It's almost formed into a square. It's almost like a box. You know what I mean? So that's something about the number four, the higher and the lower vibrations of the four energy. So fours in general health-wise have to maintain overall health, overall exercise, um, overall, just general health practices to help them. Moving on to the number five. The number five, those are people who are born on the fifth of a month, people who are born on the 14th of a month, people who are born on the 23rd of a month. Those are people who are born with the personality number of the number five. On the lower vibration of the five, you have some fives on an extreme, extreme level who can be narcissistic or psychopath on the lower, lower, lower vibration, the lowest. Um, but on the lower vibration, also fives can be very, very scattered, very scattered brain. They have so many interests. They go into one thing to start something else. They go into something. They don't finish things that they start. On their lower vibration. I tend to find that a lot of people born under the number fives also have kind of slick mouths. Also say things kind of slick. Um, but that's the lower vibration of the five kind of in a nutshell. Scattered energy, lack of organization all over the place. The higher vibration of the number five is... They can also be very popular like the number three. Even though five and three are opposites, five can also, it's a very popular number. It's an entertainment number. You'll find a lot of people in the entertainment field, whether it be sports, whether a lot of people that make it mainstream especially, whether it be sports, whether it be acting, whether it'll be um, singing, music, whatever. That five vibration people tend to um, do well in things of entertainment, or you'll find fives in those celebrities' numbers somewhere. So a lot of the fives, five is, an, is a writing energy, an entertainment energy um, on its higher vibration. Um, so that's, remember, that's people born under the fifth day of the month, the 14th of a month, or the 23rd. Another thing under the five vibration, fives can be very good communicators. They can also be very talkative. So when you find... Um, people born under the five vibration or that have the number five somewhere in their chart. It can be, people could be functioning at their higher or lower vibration of their numbers because everything, like I said in the beginning, is balanced. No number is bad. <laughs> Just like in astrology, no sign is bad. Even though people like to say, oh, I can't stand cancers. I can't stand Aquariuses. I'm somebody who really got a problem with Aquarius males. But 
<laughs> no sign is actually bad. Every sign has a higher and lower vibration, just like in the numbers. I'm not going to go too deep into the astrology. I'm going to stick to numerology today. Um, so if you notice with the shape of a five, it's kind of linear in the beginning and then it curves, which is the masculine energy, the feminine energy. So it kind of has a balance of the masculine and feminine energy with the way that the number is written. Um, fives, let's see, fives health wise, a lot of fives tend to have challenges health wise with um anxiety i find anxiety because they can be very scattered on their lower vibration they can bring themselves anxiety a lot of times we get illnesses we manifest it in ourselves you know what i mean you go through traumas you go through things and you manifest illnesses in yourself um moving on to the number six those are people who are born under the sixth of a month the 15th of a month or the 24th of a month. Their personality number is the number six if they're born under any of those days of a month. So make sure you guys are writing it down. Feel free to ask questions as I'm going along. I want to make sure I'm not going too fast as I'm teaching about numerology on a very basic level from zero to nine. So now we're up to the number six. The lower vibration of the number six is stubborn. Oh my goodness. Stubborn, stubborn, stubborn. Jealous. Spiteful. Sixes can have all of that. Sixes can also be manipulative on their lower vibration. The higher vibration of the number six is very loving, very compassionate. Loving family, loving family time, togetherness. Um, let me see, what else about the number six? I'm just going off the top of my head, you guys, so bear with me as I'm teaching you guys zero through nine. Um, number six is also a very sensual energy. Number five is also a very sexual, sensual number, excuse me. I'm going to get to why I said sexual and what, how it connects. Sometimes when you're reading numerology... And you see certain five energies in certain placements or certain six energies in certain placements. It will indicate history of sexual abuse. The numbers go very, very deep. Five and six are sensual numbers. You'll find a lot of people who have been through certain um, traumas sexually will be somehow tied to the five and the six energy. That doesn't mean that that's their fault. That's a number where some traumas, different traumas are drawn to different numbers. Those two numbers, sometimes trauma is drawn to those numbers. Those are not the only exclusive numbers where sexual trauma can be drawn to. But I'm just giving that little piece. That's a little extra for you guys. Don't be afraid to hit my cash app as well. Thank you for everyone who blesses my cash app for the teachings and the readings. I really appreciate it because I got bills like everybody else. And I'm not working my regular job anymore. So I appreciate it. Cash App or Venmo. Um, it's all in the chat. I typed it in the chat in the very beginning. Um, but going back to the number six. It can be sensual. And sensual, sensual energy can be used on a higher vibration or on a lower vibration. Because if you understand sensuality and sexuality, it is also creative energy. You'll find a lot of creative people who are born under the number three, six, or nine. If you notice even the moon phases, three, six, nine, certain numbers are naturally associated with each other. Three, six, nine. You'll see that a lot. Um, but on the higher vibration, six is a very loving, very loyal, loyal, loyal energy. Um, moving on, oh, and sixes usually have to watch out for sinus congestion. On the health aspect they tend to have issues with the sinuses and the upper respiratory area I honestly don't suggest a lot of sixes eat dairy because of that 
Um, moving on to the number seven, I'm just giving brief synopsis of each number from zero to nine. And once I get to nine, if you guys want to type in your specific birthday, I'll give you a little bit of a reading um, based on your personality number. If you type in your um, your day, the, the number day that you were born. Moving on to the number seven, Halito, Halito, <laughs> Halito, Tia. Moving on to the number seven. Um, the number seven, which you notice is very linear. So it's masculine energy with the number seven. Sevens, people with the personality of the number seven are people who are born on the seventh of a month, that are born on the 16th of a month, or the 25th of a month. So it doesn't matter if that's in July, August, September, October. If you're born on any of those number days, you are a number seven person because that's your personality number numerologically. People born the lower vibration, I'm starting with the lower vibration first and then I'm going to the higher vibration of the number. And I'm also touching a little bit on the health aspects of different numbers. People born under the number seven tend to, on the lower vibration, tend to be very secretive, tend to hide and have a lot of secrets. Skeletons in their closet, honey. <laughs> People born under the number seven also tend to have a lot of depression and anxiety from what I see. Um, so sometimes a person could tell me their birthday and I already kind of know some of their, their challenges within themselves. Depression and anxiety. The seven is very similar to the four in the sense of they do a lot of thinking and analyzing. That's another very analytical number. Um, so make sure you guys are taking notes on that. Lower vibration sevens can be secretive. Some of them can be kind of wild <laughs> on that lower vibration. If they're operating on the lower vibration of that number, can be kind of wild. Um... And wild in the sense of like flying off the handle temper wise, I've noticed. Very emotional and not always, in, if it's on a lower vibration, not in a positive way. Um, seven energies on a lower vibration, like I mentioned already, tend to suffer from depression, anxiety behind closed doors. Vibration of the number seven. Thank you, Thea. The higher vibration of the number seven energy is that seven is regarded in many cultures as a sacred number. Seven continents, seven wonders of the world, <laughs> seven chakras. Seven on a higher vibration can be very spiritually in tune. They can go places spiritually if they're not afraid of it. A lot of sevens that I meet either go one extreme or the other. Either they're very afraid of that seven energy or they dive heavily into it. Remember, those are people born on the seventh of a month, the 16th or the 25th of a month. People who are born under the number seven, I tend to find if they're in tune and they don't um, shun their natural ability to um, be um, intuitive and spiritual, tend to have very vivid dreams, a lot of deja vu, seven generations. There you go. You know what I mean? Seven can be a very spiritual number. And going back to the number six, something else to add to your notes about the number six, six, just like the number two, is also a healing number. Also a healing number. A lot of healers and natural counselors are born under the number six. Number seven people tend to want to dabble into the occult. They tend to want to get into the spirituality of things. You know what I mean? They, they, they're analytical, so they tend to want to peel back those layers and find out the secrets of things. So that's the higher vibration of the number seven. My mom just giving brief synopsis all the way to from zero to nine. So now we move on to the number eight. Number eight. And by the way, just going back, add this to your notes because I didn't say every element. I'm going off the top of my head. I didn't say every element of every number. So zero is um, a feminine number, but zero isn't um, 
I don't believe zero is tied to an element, but one is. One is a fire number. Two is a water number. Three is a fire number. Four is an air number. Five is an air number. Six is a water number. Seven is a water number. No, sorry. Six is not a water number. Six is an earth number. I'm sorry. Seven is a water number. Now we're moving on to eight, which is an earth number. Eight. Those are people who are born on the eighth of a month, born on the 17th of a month, and people who are born on the 26th of a month. The lower vibration of the number eight, they can be bully-like. They can really be some assholes. I'm being honest with you. <laughs> Eights can really be some assholes when they want to be. Very bully-like. Very opportunistic. Very business. And being business can be a higher or lower vibrational thing. It's how you do business. If you are a type of person who does business without integrity, that's a problem. Then doing business with integrity. Eights tend to be very motivated by money and financial gain. Mm-hmm. That's the lower vibration of the eight. Not the higher vibration. I ain't get to the higher vibration yet, Seville. This is what eights can do. A lot of eights that I come across with got some smart ass mouths too. Oh my goodness. They can tell, they like to tell people what to do. You do this and you do that and you do this and you do that. And, and feel they have the authority to do this, honey. <laughs> That's the lower vibration of the number eight. The higher vibration of the number eight is financial gain in a positive way. Financial gain with integrity. Eights naturally have an authoritative energy about them. They are tied to the earth and they are earth number. Eights, yeah, they definitely tend to be smart a lot of times. You know what I mean? The higher vibration of the eight is eight can manifest money. Mm-hmm. Eights can manifest money. But they can also, the, see, something that eights have to be careful with is that eight is a karmic number. And so what eights cast out, they get back very fast. Boom, 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 boom. So if they cast out negativity, that comes back very fast. So eights have to be weary and be mindful to maintain their integrity when they do business. Eights tend to have a lot of business ideas. And if you notice, a lot of people born under the number eight or have number eights in their chart tend to do very well with real estate, tend to do very well with um, being CEOs or owners of companies because they're very good at delegating and having leadership energy. That's the positive thing about, that's the positive aspect of the number eight energy. Eights have to be careful health-wise because that's like the number four in the sense where they have to take care of their overall health because they're another uh, number that is commonly misdiagnosed. They'll go to the doctor, the doctor don't know what the hell they have, or they tell them one diagnosis and then they'll tell them a whole nother fucking diagnosis <laughs> after they done told them that. Oh, I think you got a thyroid problem. Well, no, you don't got a thyroid problem. I think you got bipolar disorder. No, I think you got, because they don't know. That's why eights and fours have to take care of their overall health. You know what I mean? Overall, eating um, a lots of uh, an abundance of raw fruits and vegetables, drinking water on a consistent basis, things like that is very important for the eight. The last one from zero to nine, and then I'm going to go into master numbers. So make sure y'all taking notes. And if I'm going too fast, y'all let me know so I can slow down. If there's something that's unclear, please let me know. Um, and please don't be afraid to hit my cash app. Dollar sign A Zabriski is my cash app. My Venmo is at Ozma Zabriski, A-S-M-A-A-A dash Z-A-B-R-I-S-K-I-E. Thank y'all, everyone who always blesses my cash app or my Venmo. I appreciate it. If you can't, things happen, but I do appreciate it because I got bills like the next person to be giving free classes now, but I want to teach the people. So, <laughs> moving along to the number nine. Oh, just so you know, just to talk about the physicality of the number eight. Notice that the number eight looks like two circles. Circles are infinite. Remember we talked about the zeros in the beginning? What goes around comes around. 
Eight is a karmic number. What goes around comes around. You see what I'm saying? It's like it has two wombs. It's a feminine number. Going into the number nine. Number nine. Those are people who are born under the ninth of a month, the 18th of a month, or the 27th of a month. If you're born under the ninth, the 18th, or the 27th of a month, your personality number is the number nine. Okay, you're a number nine person. People who are born, hey, Vendelina, yes, mama. Feel free to watch from the beginning to take notes. Uh, <laughs> thank y'all for supporting me, everybody who's here. But number nine, so if you notice the number nine starts out as a cipher, which is feminine energy. The cipher, the circle represents the womb. Then it gets linear, like a one. So it has a feminine and a masculine energy combined in that number nine. Um, number nines, on their lower vibration, they are hot headed. I tend to associate the number nine with the sun. Number nine is a fire number. On the lower vibration, they will go off in a heartbeat. They are very hot-headed on their lower vibration. It is hard to calm the number nine down. Because when number nines get fired up, they raise hell. They set shit on fire. <laughs> But health-wise, I think nines have to be careful with high blood pressure because they work themselves up. <laughs> Lower vibration of the number nine, They're, they also can try to pull a fast one. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Always try to pull a fast one. They're very clever, though. That's one of their higher vibration things. Another lower vibration thing of the number nine is that they have no filter when they speak and they don't care how shit comes out. They will say anything to you they want to say. How they want to say it, they don't give a shit. And they will speak their piece. A lot of number nines get into a lot of fist fights, especially in their younger years. If not fist fights, a lot of arguments. So when I see number nines in people's numerology charts or in their name or in their birthday, I already know what it can be on their lower vibration. Number nine is on a higher vibration nine is the highest form of love nines love very hard the higher vibration of people who are born under the number nine is love and unconditional love nines can love unconditionally on their higher vibration nines on their higher vibration love to help others on their lower vibration they can be very selfish and takers Take, 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 take from people. Their higher vibration, very loving, the highest form of love. You know what I mean? Um, another thing with number nines, on their higher vibration, they can be very generous giving people. They love to give to other people. They love to fight for the underdog. And nine is also a very warrior-like energy on its higher vibration if it's used wisely. That's why they fight all the fucking time. Because <laughs> on the higher vibration, they are natural warriors. They tend to do very well with studying things like martial arts or some type of fighting style. I personally, my own theory, I think the first woman to probably ever carry a mouth blade had to be born under the number nine or have a number nine in their chart. Because number nines on their lower vibration, a lot of times like to hide weapons. <laughs> Very feisty, fiery energy. But on the flip side, they can be very loving. My numerology teachers, two, at least two of my numerology teachers that I had in the past would say that nines have this thing where they think they are the best thing since sliced bread. They carry themselves like they are the best thing on earth. But I tend to disagree with that dealing with the nine energy. I think that my personal opinion as a numerologist, that's a misunderstanding of the nine energy. I think that nine energies, when they, they'll, they'll sit back with certain things if they don't know it, but what they know they're extremely confident in and nobody can tell them any different. And so it comes across as they're arrogant. It's like, no, no, no. I know I'm right about this. I know I'm good at that. 
So I think it's just a, a way of, of um, self-assurance and confidence that gets misinterpreted, misinterpreted a lot of times as they're arrogant or they think they're better than other people. I don't think that that's always the case with the number nine energy. I think it's misunderstood. That's just my personal opinion. Um, so we went through the number zero through nine, the personality numbers. We went through the masculine and feminine um, energy of the numbers. Um, let's see. We can talk a little bit about jobs with the numbers. People born under the number one tend to like to do jobs where they don't have to really work with other people. They like to do jobs by themselves because they like to roll dolo like the number one. Number one is, you know what I mean? They say you're born alone, die alone. They like to do things on their own. They like projects and things to do on their own. Hey, cuz Tamara. People born under the number two are very good with partnerships. They tend to be very good with working with others alongside other people. For example, let's look at Beyonce and Michelle. I can bring some celebrities into it. Michelle, not Michelle, I'm sorry, Beyonce and Kelly. Kelly has expressed some time in old, old interviews when I used to be like a Destiny's Child fan that she's more comfortable on stage standing next to Beyonce. Well, look at Kelly's birthday. Kelly is born under the number two. Tools are very good counselors when it comes to jobs. They tend to do well with jobs dealing with counseling. Um where they help other people because they're naturally very helpful people. People born under the number three tend to do very well with jobs where they got to talk. They like to talk, dumb and number fives. Um, they tend to do well in entertainment because they tend to have a very vivid way of expressing themselves when they talk. Twos, will, not twos, threes will be the one to be like, hey girl, let me tell you what happened today. Those are number threes. <laughs> <laughs> and if they're not born under a number three day, they have three somewhere in their chart. No one ever has just one number in their chart. Please make note of that. Everyone's numerology chart consists of different numbers in different areas that help um, create who they are. You know what I mean? So you may be born under three day, but you might have another number that's associated with your life path, or you might have another number. So these are different aspects of yourself, kind of like astrology. Everyone is not just their sun sign. People go, oh, I can't stand Geminis. They're more than just a Gemini. That's not the only sign in their astrology chart. They might be a very likable Gemini mm -hmm. to a person who doesn't Geminis. And a lot of times it's what's composed on their chart and what's composed in yours and how those things work together in accordance. Every um, astro astrologic, see, I'm going into astrology and I'd like to go off. So I'm not going to go off too much. I'm going to stick back to the world. I just want to say this. Every astrological sign is also associated with a number as well. Make note of that. People born under the number four, tend to do well in jobs where they have to be analytical. Philosophy, things like that. Because they love to think through layers. And if they're born under the number two, not two, 22, which is a master number four. I'm going to go into the master numbers after I go through the jobs. If they're born under the 22nd of a month, they tend to do well with building things. A lot of children who are born under the 22, I find love building manipulatives, especially when I was teaching in the classroom. They love to play in the block area. They love to play with magnetiles. They love to play with unifix cubes, building things, building castles. They're also the type of kids, if they're born under any type of four, not just the number two, 22, they love to take fucking toys apart. Because they want to understand and analyze the inner workings of the toy. How does this toy talk? Let me break it open and put it back together to see how it works. People born under the number five tend to do very well in entertainment like the number three. Actually, three and five tend to do well in fields that deal with um, entertainment, fields that deal with writing, gossip, <laughs> especially the three. Um... For example, um, 
I'm sure Wendy Williams has a three or five in her chart somewhere, even though she's born under the number nine. But if you notice, she's born under the number nine. She's always getting into arguments with people because <laughs> she's born on the 18th. Remember, we reduce numbers in numerology by adding them together until they are a single digit. So someone born on the 18th is one plus eight, which equals nine. So that's a number nine personality number. And we can bring up celebrities. Y'all can type up any celebrity in the chat. If I know that celebrity's birthday, I could tell you a little bit about that celebrity. <laughs> um, people born under the number six tend to do very well with counseling. Counseling jobs, casework jobs, things where they get to help people on that level. I keep pushing my thing up looking crazy. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> they tend to do well with um, jobs where they have to help others very well with things like that. Usually natural therapists, um, psychologists, things like that. They tend to do very well with those things because they have a compassionate nature about them. Um, people born under the number seven tend to do very well with analytical jobs as well. Philosophy similar to the number four. But people born under the number seven also tend to do very well with occult jobs, healing work. Twos, sixes, and sevens tend to do very well with healing work. You know what I mean? Sevens tend to be doing, do well with, um, with doing readings, getting into metaphysics, because they also have an analytical mind, but they can think and also see through layers of things. Seven can be a very heavy number if the person embraces that number. People born under the number eight tend to do well with jobs where they get to be the boss or the manager because they like to boss everybody around. <laughs> jobs where they can be the CEO or the owner of a company where they can delegate things, they tend to do well with that. Especially if it's a number eight person with integrity, they tend to be excellent bosses. If it's a number eight person who's an asshole who doesn't have integrity, they're bullies on their lower vibration, as I spoke about earlier. People born under the number nine tend to do, do well with jobs where they get to kind of do their own thing. But charity work tend to be the best jobs for them. Running um, charities and things like that because they are excellent at humanitarian works. Those are things that they tend to be very good at because of their numbers. They love to give. They're generous. And remember, nine is the highest form of love. So now we're going to go into the mass number, 777. Those are, Some people consider those angel numbers. And so it's a heightened vibration of the number seven. You know what I mean? 777 can almost look to some people or be read almost as a type of strong master number and it can also be read as seven plus seven which is 14 plus seven is 21 so it could also be read as a three vibration it can be read as so many things with the seven 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 angel numbers that's the whole another day of uh lesson we just starting with the basics and i'm just giving out information so people can take note on um the the basics of numerology um master numbers so Different numerologists recognize different master numbers. Every numerologist damn near recognizes 11 and 22 almost always as master numbers. 11, remember, you reduce numbers in numerology by adding them together until they are single digit. 1 plus 1 is 2. 11 is a higher magnified version of a number 2. It's a master number. So everything that deals with the number 2 on a heightened level is 11. So like I mentioned that twos tend to have issues with digestive issues, tend to need to drink a lot of water. If you're born on the 11th or the 29th of a month, because two plus nine is 11, you are born under that master number. It's a higher vibration of two. So you really have to drink water. 11s tend to be very intuitive. Twos are intuitive too, but when you see that 11 or that 29, they're even more intuitive. Very strong vibrational numbers, very strong um, high vibrational too. 11 can also be on a lower vibration, very 
deceptive. They don't use their throat chakra enough all the time. And they tend to, um, on their lower vibration, not speak up. You know what I mean? That's a challenge that the 11s tend to have, needing to use their throat chakra and also practicing discernment. So twos have these issues too, but with 11s, it's even more magnified. It's even more powerful of an issue usually. 22 is the other master number that's usually recognized by numerologists. Two plus two is four. In numerology, we reduce every number, no matter how many digits it is, no matter if it's 3,333, we always add the numbers, the numerals together until it goes into a single digit. Two plus two is four. So 22 is a higher vibration of the four energy. Remember, I told you that four energy can deal with a lot of analytical, um, overthinking kind of energy, constantly analytical thinking. So someone born under the number two, a lot of people you'll find, unfortunately, born under the number two, if they can't master or control that 22 energy and master their mind, a lot of them end up having mental health issues. Bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, major depression, different things like that. So it's very important for people born, see people born under the number 22 can either build things very masterful or they can be master, masterful at destruction, at tearing shit up. Okay? 22, it's for vibration on a higher level. It's very hard for them to shut their mind off. People born under the number four, it's already hard for them. 22 is even harder. It's like those are the people sometimes that can't sleep because they got too much shit on their mind. Their mind's constantly thinking, 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 thinking. They don't know how to shut their mind off. Because overanalyzing every little detail, every finite thing. I find that people born under the number four and number two second guess themselves a lot, especially if they're born under the 22, because 22 is two twos, even though it equals a four. You see what I'm saying? So we went through numbers zero through nine and the master numbers. I hope I wasn't going too fast for you guys in your notes. Um, I gave a, a brief synopsis of the masculine and feminine energy of the numbers the vibration of the numbers, the elements that the numbers deal with. Um, so feel free if you want to um, type in a birthday um, and I will tell you some information about yourself based on your personality number. I don't need your whole entire birthday. You can just put what number day you're on. So me, I'm born on, on July 15th. I will only put the number 15 in the chat. You know what I mean? Um, if anybody doesn't have anything to add or any questions or anything tonight, um, we'll end it. But I'm going to give you guys a few minutes to type in. Oh, 1025. There we go. So your personality number is a seven. Remember, 25, people born under the seventh day of the month, the 14th, not the seven, 14th, I'm sorry, the seventh day of the month, the 16th or the 25th are number seven personality numbers. So... You are born under the number seven because you're born on the 25th. That tells me that you are an intuitive person. You feel things and know things before it happens. You might have very vivid dreams. You can go very deep spiritually if you allow yourself to. Or you might be someone on the flip side that blocks it because you know that you have that capability. There we go. Another number 25. Very intuitive very analytical about things y'all worry too damn much <laughs> y'all can worry yourself into illness so it's important that you guys do not worry yourself into anxiety into depression a lot of people born under the number seven tend to suffer from anxiety and or depression because y'all are very self-critical and y'all overthink sometimes but y'all also can be very spiritually inclined. Do not doubt yourself. Do not doubt your instinct. Do not doubt your intuition. 
That's when y'all fuck up in life. When y'all don't trust y'all gut instinct on shit. A seven, y'all will feel things very strongly. <laughs> but the moment y'all doubt y'all feelings, that's when things may go wrong. Because remember I told y'all that seven is a deep spiritual number. It's highly regarded in a lot of cultures. Seven wonders of the world. Seven chakras in this body. Seven continents. You'll see that seven reoccurring a lot of times in history, in the Bible, in different scriptures. Seven in some numerology is also regarded as a prophecy number. Did y'all know that? So seven... Sevens also tend to hide secrets. You know what I mean? They tend to be a little low key with certain things. Now, sometimes you'll have someone who's born under the number seven, but they're born under a, a astrological sign that's more out there. So they may not be as much of a low key person. There's so many things that tie into a person's personality. So you might have someone that's born under the seven energy, but there'll be a fire sign. It'll be a Sagittarius number seven and they might be wild. And you're like, you a number seven? <laughs> There's so many things that, that make up um, the uniqueness and, and the dynamic people that an individual is. Everybody is like a fingerprint. Nobody have the exact same fingerprint. That's what makes you guys specifically special. Sevens have to take care of their overall health. Sevens would do very well getting into meditation. Spirituality is very important for sevens. It helps to keep them grounded. Whether you are a religious person or whether you're not into religion, some level of spirituality is usually very necessary for the seven to ground themselves and to have balance. Seven is also a water number. You're connected with water. Okay? You have to drink water. A lot of water that will help your overall health. Seven is also, um, there was something else I was going to say about the seven. I'm going straight off the top of the dome. So, hey, <laughs> hey, Rachel, hey, Rahima, hey, F.A. Um, but yes, the vibration with the number seven is um, very interesting. Sevens, a lot of times, can have very vivid dreams. They tend to have deja vu. Rahima, you're a Leo number seven. So you get pissed off. You set things off. <laughs> because that lioness energy, you know what I mean? That lioness energy is strong. But you being a number seven, you can get very deeply into the occult. Also with you being a Leo. So it's very important to know, um, you know, what personality number... Vindalina, you mentioned that you're born on the 27th of a month. So you are born, your personality number is the number nine. Number nines, as I was stating earlier, are feisty. They say things with no filter a lot, especially if they get upset. And see, Vindalina, you're also connected with the three because you're a Pisces and three is ruled by Pisces. Three rules Pisces and Sagittarius. Remember, I spoke of the three, the six, and the nine being connected. You're born under the ninth. And you're born under an astrological sign ruled by three. So that tells me that you're a person that loves music, Vendelina. You're someone who loves music. You may even have some artistic ways about yourself that you may not either have explored or that you don't tell everybody about. People probably really got to know you. To know that you do it. You might be able to draw. You might be able to sing. Those artistic numbers are there for you. You have the three. You have the nine. And you automatically, because you have the three and the nine, have the six somewhere. You being born under the number nine, Vindalina, tells me that you... Are, you have naturally have a warrior-like energy about yourself. You like to stick up for the underdog. You don't like to see people mistreated. You love universal love, brother and sisterly love and bonding. You would do very well with charity works. Doing something like creating your own um, nonprofit organization where you can give back to people. You're a very generous person and you love very hard. You just want to be appreciated for the things that you do for people. Because people sometimes try to take advantage of you. 
And it's not fair. And when it's not fair, it sets you off and that fiery, feisty, nine energy temper comes out, roaring like a lion. And you go all funny. <laughs> it's funny. You said, I do. And yes, I am artistic. I can draw really good too. See, I never knew that about you, Vindalina. Kwame never mentioned, you never mentioned that to me. And I'm feisty. Yes, yes to everything. Wow, this is great, sis. Yes, the numbers will tell you so much information. And numbers have been around forever. The Mayans use the numbers. The Incas use the numbers. The Aztec use the numbers. The Egyptians use the numbers. Oh, so many ancient societies use numbers. Do y'all know that people use the numbers even in our government? To calculate what dates and what times to have certain meetings, to pass certain laws. It goes very, very deep. Please feel free to hit my cash app up with whatever you can donate. It's greatly appreciated. If you can, um, I really appreciate it. That's my cash app that I just typed in. Um, oops. Or you can hit um, my um, Venmo. I really appreciate whatever y'all can give. You know what I mean? Um, who else? Anybody else can type in their, their number day, the number day that they are born. So you don't need to put the whole birthday, just the number day. So if you're born on the 7th of the month, put 7. If you're born on the 20th of a month, put 20. And I'll give you information regarding, um, regarding you know, everything. This is by donation, so there's no set amount that I'm asking for. If you can help, it's very greatly appreciated. Um, for the metaphysics that I am sharing. Um, what else can I say about numbers? Numbers being tied to elements. Um, numbers are tied to different astrological signs. Capricorn, for example, was tied to the number eight. A lot of Capricorns is about their money. They known in astrology to be workaholics. <laughs> Remember what I told you about the number eights? Number eights can manifest money very easily, very quickly, but they can also lose money very quickly because it's a karmic number. They have to maintain business with integrity. They also are the numbers of CEOs, of real estate people. You'll find that. You look at my first and last name together, it equals 26, which equals eight. I could do very well in real estate if I wanted to get into that. Maybe one day I will, <laughs> you know, but eight is an earth number, it needs grounding, it's connected with the earth. Let me see, any other birthday numbers y'all want to type in? Y'all can type in family members, boyfriends, girlfriends, whoever. Let me see. Mm-hmm. Let me put Venmo. Venmo is Ozma Zabriskie. Thank you, everybody who's blessing my cash app. Everybody who's blessing my Venmo. I appreciate you, and I appreciate this. Thank you so much. I'm trying to uh, maintain without going back to a regular 9 to 5. <laughs> oh, 31st. A lot of mercy. That person got a smart ass mouth. <laughs> that three and that one together. Feisty person when they want to be, especially if you piss them off. Oh, somebody mentioned the 27th. I just finished doing the 27th, Rahima. Um, I'm going to repost this video so everybody can go back and refer to it. The 31st, that's the number four person. That's a person that's constantly in their mind, constantly thinking, 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 overthinking sometimes. That's a person who can um, be very analytical, but can over, like to look too deep into things sometimes. You know what I mean? They have to take things apart and analyze. Because that's that four energy. Um, people born on the 31st, what can I say about people born on the 31st? I already said they have a kind of a slick mouth. They may even, they're odd, 
People born under the number four tend to be considered odd. They're not like everyone else. They march to the beat of their own drum. They're just kind of weird to people. But they're not weird for a bad reason necessarily all the time. They're weird because a lot of times they're ahead of their time. Four is an air number. They're ahead of their time. They, they think things in advance a lot of times before, e before things even happen. They do very well with structure, organization, discipline, and order. If you are planning to do anything with them, if you make a plan, a solid plan, a person born under the 31st would love that. You know what I mean? They work best with schedules. Even if they're an unorganized four, they'll work the best when they have a schedule and things map out for themselves. You said, when I add my whole birthday, year, month, and day, it is still a seven. So that means your life path number is a seven. It's meant for you to get into um, metaphysics, maybe something like philosophy. It's meant for you to get into spirituality. You're a person who um, doesn't always go with everything. You like to see through layers of stuff. You like to pull back layers. You're a truth seeker. You know what I mean? Somebody could tell you something. And mm, you got to look through the layers if it don't feel right. You got to really analyze it if it don't feel right. You can even be kind of a skeptic. You'll find that a lot of times with uh, number sevens and number fours, they could be skeptics about a lot of stuff. They're not people that just kind of go with the wave of things all the time. And if they are, it bothers them. If they do, it bothers them. That's why they have to trust their intuition. Everybody could say, oh, let's get a vaccination. The vaccination is safe. And a number seven will be like, I don't know about that. <laughs> Something don't feel right. That's that seven energy. You know what I mean? Let me see. Anybody got any other numbers y'all want to add up in here before we close it out for tonight? We've been on for a minute. We've been on since I think 830. I'm really trying to get my YouTube stuff up right um, so I can do my cooking show and because my I have to figure out how to navigate all these things. I do a lot of things by myself, y'all. So I, I appreciate y'all patience with me. Um, and I want to also put some of these live numerology readings on YouTube um, so that people can go to refer to it and different things. But I appreciate all the support that everyone is giving me. Yes. That's another thing. Speaking of research, sevens love to research and especially twos. People that are born under the number two are avid researchers. They are excellent at researching things, especially if it's something they're interested in. They may not research everything, but if it's something that they're interested in, they will find any damn thing they could find about that one thing and research it down to a T as much as possible. People who are born under the number one tend to be avid readers, love to read a lot of books a lot of times, especially self-help books. If it's something that can teach self-help or um, teach them how to do something that they're interested in, ones would love that. That would be a great gift for somebody born under the number one. A self-help book with something that they're interested in. Okay? So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, thank you all for blessing my cash app. Um, the ones who blessed my cash app, the ones who didn't, I appreciate y'all as well. Um... Hopefully y'all bless my cash up later, but if y'all don't, it's still all love. Um, and I appreciate it. I appreciate everybody viewing. Kwame, you joined right at the end, man. You had to watch it from the beginning. I'm about to close out. But I thank you all for your love and support. I thank you um, for the vibrations. I'm very grateful for the love vibrations for you guys, from you guys. And I'm thankful um, to the universe. I'm thankful to my ancestors um, for guiding me to this side of the metaphysics. I'm into other metaphysics, but I can't give you all my secrets at one time. <laughs> so I just wanted to share that with y'all. Y'all have a peaceful weekend and a blessed night and enjoy life. Um, understand that we're in times right now that are difficult for a lot of people but understand that life goes in cycles and just as we have our downs we will always have it come back up 
Just like we have our ups, we will always have it go back down. And that's part of the balance in this realm that life has to go up and it has to go down and it has to go up and it has to go down and appreciate those down times. The reason I say appreciate those down times, because those down times are our best teachers. Those are the places that we learn the most from if we allow ourselves to. That bad relationship that we got in is the one that taught us the fucking most. So be grateful for those down times and be grateful for the up times when things are going right and going the way you want it to go. All right? They're our best teachers. Everyone have a great night. Love y'all. Peace.